Hey, everybody, you're listening to Crystal here with the Plant Pusher podcast. And what's really, really exciting is that we're here with you to always talk about all things plants, colors, textures, shapes, their impacts on your life. I love working with plants. I love introducing you to new plants. And here at Plant Pusher, that's what I do. I push you straight to the plants. Hey, everybody, we're back here at the Plant Pushers, pushing them heavy plants on you because we like to keep you guided in the right direction with these plants. Yes, yes, y'all. So I've got Chef Brian back with me today as my amazing co-host for the day. And so today, guys, we are talking about plants and aphrodisiacs and how they can really, really, really get you to a place you desire to be with your partner. And so we're going to introduce some really cool ones to you. So have you ever used plants as aphrodisiac? Mm. Well, if I want to set the mood... I uh, may make uh No, have you used them before? Of course. Which ones were your I'm favorite? I'm just sending the mood. <laughs> send the mood. <laughs> Which ones are your favorite? I'm trying to skip. Like, if I was going to, like, okay, so let me set the theme, okay? Okay. So, so you know, I uh, met an incredible person. Okay. And I invite her over for dinner. And so if I'm going to cook something, Depending on the season. So let's just say it's the wintertime. Risotto. Risotto with a beautiful... Because rice is a plant that counts. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Go ahead. I would do like a saffron, you know, risotto with lobster. Oh, okay. Okay. All right. So saffron's a flower, guys. For those of you who don't know, it's a beautiful little orange flower with these golden tones to it. But it doesn't always smell so beautiful. But it looks beautiful. And it's the most expensive. Very. Because of the quantity that it produces per flower. So it's Mm. three per flower. So it's the most expensive. It's over truffles. But even that is uh, aphrodisiac as well. Um, But um, if I was going to do that, yeah, it would be risotto. It would be a beautiful bottle of, you know, some chilled Riesling or Pinot Grigio um, to cut the fattiness from the lobster and the mm-hmm. richness of this, um, the risotto. But it's just setting the mood. And then I would actually have like in the air some incense with, you know, patchouli or you know, <laughs> Arabian <laughs> musk in the air. Okay, okay. You know, so um, those are going to be your aphrodisiacs. The yeah, Arabian musk. you know, because it's, it's all about your five senses. Okay. So, you know, you're not, you do not want to only have just the visual. You want to have the smell and just like, just beautiful, beautiful, you know, time or so, moment. So you out here wooing these lovely people with, uh, with, with plant loving and setting the mood with. Well, it's actually the plants that are setting the mood. Okay, this is <laughs> I'm true. just, I'm just orchestrating, you know what I'm saying? Just like the conductor, I'm just orchestrating it <laughs> to make it feel what it is. It's supposed to be incredible, an incredible time, you know? Okay, okay. One of my favorites is, um... I know people love lavender while it's beautiful, but I also love passion flower. It's one of my most favorite herbs to work with. Um, It's kind of like, you know, nature's mm, relaxation. You know, it's anti-anxiety. It's so calming. It smells just almost like a clean grass with a lemon undertone. But what it can do for the well-being is put you in a place of peace. And relaxation. There's a lot of anxiety that comes with intimacy, comes from just being stressed out about how it's going to go, if you're going to be able to perform the way you want. So I never want someone to feel that way. So I really love passion flower. Like in my company, we make an oil from passion flower, which is amazing. It smells gorgeous. So you're telling me if I have butterflies in my stomach before I'm about to meet this person, I should take some passion flower. I would strongly suggest that you steep a good tea or take some capsules. Okay. You know, we make a decadent candy from it, something fun. Okay. And then you have that prior to. And I mean, it could be the same way with a good deep smoked lavender. Like if you had some smoky lavender in a cocktail mm-hmm. or a mocktail, that's beautiful. You see a lot of um, like lavender teas and lavender lemonades going on with fresh raw mm-hmm. lavender. Have that moment to relax. I really believe that relaxation is like one of the biggest things when it comes to an aphrodisiac. So we talked about how to calm it down. Let's talk about how we turn it up. What what plants do you use for the turn up? For turn up spice. What spices? So if I had to use a spice, I, I would create like a gastrique, which is like a sugar and um, 
acid. So it would be like uh, strawberries with balsamic vinegar. And um, I would reduce that down Mm -hmm. with like a half cup of sugar. Mm -hmm. And then make like a mousse. Chocolate mousse. So that's gonna be what what gets them the everything riled up. We get we getting ready. Yes. That, yeah, of course, that, that, this is to be dessert. It be dessert. Dessert. Right? But wait, before we get to dessert, we have to talk about like we already rent through the risotto. That's the second. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. So it's kind of like a meal. Okay, so you're gonna have your 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 mocktail, or your cocktail. Then you're gonna have your meal, possibly an appetizer, and then before we get to dessert, there needs to be the heat up. Now, I personally do something with cayenne. Because cayenne heats you up. Yeah, of course. Gets your gets you kind of moving. You might sweat a little bit, but it's really, really good for your arteries, for your digestion, for your stomach. And it's really, really good for weight loss. But it also, to me, gives you a little edge. Like, it gives you a little bit of energy, too. What do you think? Okay, cayenne. cayenne okay. Like some chocolate that's infused with cayenne. Yeah, that would work really well. You, you know what I'm saying? Because both are plants. People forget the cacao. is It's a plant. Yeah, okay. You just want high quality chocolate. So like I would do that. You could even do cacao, like a sweet and just really bitter note, you know? Yeah, like dipping it in pineapple or dipping kiwi or whatever. Like things are going to really kind of take you there. So I like the idea. Even like if you like smoke some some coffee and crushed it on top, like that would be so dope. (laughs) They would get all this plant loving with that mixture. Okay, yeah, okay. So a little cayenne with a little bit of espresso. Don't try to take my ideas now because I don't know what you're doing with your with your little with your little with your little your little people that you're loving on. I don't know what's going on over there, but don't try to take my ideas. No, it's just it was just a gift. I felt like it was a gift. But um, if I must carry on to something else, if I had to add spice, because I didn't answer it, I said strawberries and a gastric. But mm-hmm. um, if I had to add, I would add it to whipped cream. Shut up. Because if you think about it, whipped cream is cooling, but the heat, you could you could sense the heat at the end. You ever mm-hmm. drank something where, or tried something where the first taste on your palate is like sweetness or saltiness, and then the back note, you taste the heat, and okay. it just creeps up on you. I feel like if you use a cayenne or, you know, scotch bonnet, shoot, I like spice. Oh, so hot. It's but like you have spicy, a cooling y'all. element. So the cooling element and the heat could like coexist together. Yeah. So I would say like either cayenne or like uh, I would use, if you want to, ghost pepper. But use He's only- doing too much, y'all. We trying to be ready. And this right here is going to have you ready to run because it's going to be so freaking spicy. But but you know what? It would be a great movie. <laughs> <laughs> be a great memory if I'm trying to like have closeness with whoever my boo is at that moment like okay so wait okay let's go back so okay there is an oil that I make with passion flower and I just have to go back to this because I think it'd be an excellent massage oil as well like if you're giving like a hand massage or a back massage or whatever it is for your partner that passion flower is going to relax yet elevate you can also drink it in the tea do you have another herb on your list that can go well in a tea Damiana? You um, like it? Have I, you tried it before? I have it at home. I haven't tried it as of yet, so I, I have it. to get back to you on that. But I tried it. How is it? You know what? It make your tingles mingle. <laughs> <laughs> it make your tingles mingle? <laughs> Wait, but no, it does. Like it, like, it really does, like, relax you. And then it also gives you this feeling of, like, excitement when it's blended into a tea. Mm-hmm. It's actually nice. Subtle. It's not going to slap you in the face. Okay. But it does, I think, heighten your senses and make you overall feel more. Like, like, like oh. just heighten your, your five senses. Everything feels that much better. It's really interesting. It, it's, but it's gentle. It's not something that's going to, like, overwhelm you. Should you use, like, a tablespoon? How, how much should you use per cup I used to get the benefits? A, I, I used about a tablespoon, maybe a little bit more than a tablespoon in a tea ball. But I really did enjoy it. Okay. All right. So, what are the plants you think uh, can really get people moving? We know ginseng, okay? Because y'all always trying to buy those little supplements with ginseng in ginseng, them. Ginseng, yeah, but mm-hmm. you have to use it. You have to use it the best. I, I say fresh is the best way to go. Uh-huh. Or if you want to make it into a tincture, uh-huh. but I would think juicing. I like aloe. 
I like aloe as one too, because even though it's not aphrodisiac, it aids all the areas. So if people use aloe and a lot of their sensitive areas, it is a beautiful lubricant and it's made from plants. So since we're talking about aphrodisiacs, we also have to talk about the back end of reasons why there's issues that may arise when it comes to... It's diet. Y'all out here eating this trash. That's, that's what it is. That's what I was going to say, but you just beat me to it. My okay? bad. I'm sorry. I, I had a feeling. Inflammation, yeah. you know, irregularity within, you know, yeah. um, your body, whether it be multitude of things I, right. I really don't want to go into that but um there's a lot of other things that we should be aware about like things we put into our uh, into our body that mm -hmm. can either be a detriment or it could be a benefit right so you're saying that eating all the things that we're eating the western diet a lot of the starch a lot of excessive meats yes. uh, a lot of excessive yes. things dairy sugar all those things in in excess, in excess. or impacting our mood impacting yes. our 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 sexual functions as adults and so yes. when we go cleaner, then we get everything, you know, mingling and mangling. Yeah. The first thing is the mind. You have to kind of like awaken that part of your mind to like, because it's a lifestyle. So you have to change the lifestyle of the things you eat. You don't have to get rid of it completely, but, you know, just start like weaning off of it. Whether you eat a lot of high, high proteins, you know, even that there's also alternates to that chickpeas, lentils. I mean, people can be plant dominant. Yeah, plant dominant. Plant dominant means that the plants are the leader in your life. It doesn't mean that they've completely like gotten rid of everything else, but the plants are the dominant force. I get it. But what I'm trying to say is the reason why I brought this part up is because a lot of people take, whether it be ginseng or, you know, dami, damiana, um, lavender, nutmeg, mm -hmm. or whatever it is, and oh, they don't see the effects DCX, by the way. instantly. You know, depending on your diet, that could be the determinant factor. Mm -hmm. So yeah. if you want to see faster results, you have to eat a cleaner diet and you will be able to see exercise is important, is important, so important. And trust me, I haven't been to the gym every day, but I, I whenever I can, I definitely do go to the gym. Yeah, it helps. Like, and that's why I said mindset. I really feel like a lot of people's anxieties are in their heads about what somebody's going to think about them. Yeah. And But think about when people go out and they have fun, whether it's they're out having a drink with friends or when they're on vacation, when they just let their place go to a place of relaxation. They're not worried about what's happening at home. They're not worried about this or that. They're able to have better intimacy. And the plants are just going to put their body in a place where they can truly enjoy those moments. So that's why I think relaxation is so important. That's just my yeah. personal opinion. I don't care if you're drizzling, drizzling it with passion flower, chocolate, nutmeg, damiana, aloe. We're using all the things to get Irish us to a place. Oh, that is a good one too. Seamoss is a good yeah. aphrodisiac as well. We forgot to mention yeah, that. Yeah, seamoss is dope. Yeah, I'm saying, so seamoss is a seaweed actually. My family's from Jamaica, so we know what seamoss is because we've been, through generations we've been having it, but it has so many vitamins and minerals out of any plant that, is there any other plant that kind of like uh, measures up to uh, sea moss? I don't feel there's one that is as beneficial, like an all-in-one, the way sea moss does. I really, really love it personally. Sea moss is really good and uh, it's, it's a seaweed. Nice. Normally it's dried within salt, so you soak it. and you uh, rinse you it. You rinse it first, but then you soak it overnight. Yep. And in the morning time, you can either put on a low flame for like 10, 15 minutes so it starts to... Jellify and then you blend it's it. It's jellify up. word. It's gonna gel. <laughs> it does create gel because you're gelling. <laughs> but no, I mean you're right though. I like sea moss a lot. I love the fact you know you're the first person I ever met that talks about boiling it. Yeah. I've heard of the so we do a, a rinse, soak and blend method. Yeah. But boiling it makes a lot of sense it and it's it easy. It makes it faster. So pliable. I kind of like that. It it's makes pliable. it pliable. Yeah, the same thing that rinsing it and yeah. soaking and blending it does. But boiling it. I think that's a quick one. So I like that a lot. So do you think that I can like drink my sea moss, eat a pineapple and be ready in, the, in a day or should I probably like get my body ready? I would say give your body a week, go to the gym, a week? work out. Yeah, work out, drink, drink a lot of water just to flush out whatever, whatever you had prior. I don't know what you did, but, you know, that's a great start. Yeah. Get your body clean and ready to go so you feel lighter. You feel lighter. You mm -hmm. feel you take the sea moss in the morning and in the 
mid-afternoon, depending on uh, what kind of activities you're in. But uh, That'd be dope. But we can't tell them what to do. We just got to, like, give them some dope, you know, information. Because, you know, talk to your physician first. We're not doctors. All course. we can do is encourage you to use the plants in ways that they could be effective to you in aiding the things you need them to aid you with. Because we know it's not a cure Amen. or a one-trick pony, but we do know that you can use them for dope things for your body. So, I mean... Sea moss, little pineapple, little chocolate, little nutmeg, little ginseng, right? Little Sounds Damiana. Right. I mean, saffron, we've hit all the places. Lavender, make me a lavender smoothie. Strawberries, oysters. Some strawberries. Listen, okay, right. Okay, well, you know. Well, y'all, we're just here at the plant pushers where we push nothing but plants. Whether it's plants from the sea, plants on land, we love you injecting plants into your life. So I'm so glad you stopped by today and we cannot wait for you to come back. Yes, the plants yes. are the hard work. We'll talk to you soon. Peace. Peace. This show, Plant Pusher Podcast, is brought to you by Possibilities Podcast Platform. We appreciate you listening. Stay tuned. Your favorite episode is up next.